Okay, chapter 11. This chapter has a fair number of um, growth equations, and we'll try to walk through those kind of slowly um, and break them down and, and talk about examples. Because at first read, they're kind of complicated. Um, but when you think about the terms within them, it's not too bad. So we'll, we'll figure it out here. The key concepts for this chapter are <clears throat> populations can grow exponentially when conditions are favorable, but exponential growth cannot continue indefinitely. Population size is determined by a combination of density dependent and density independent factors. And a logistic growth equation uh, incorporates limits to growth and shows how population how population may stabilize at maximum size the carrying capacity and life tables show how survival and reproduction uh, re reproductive rates vary with age and size structure influencing population growth uh, they start with you know this example of um, <clears throat> human populations and how we've grown and changed the environment and how we're more than 7.7 .7 billion people in 2019, more than double the number of people that were alive in 1960, which is a pretty crazy statistic. In 60 years, the number of people have doubled. Our use of energy and resources has grown even more rapidly. Um, I don't, oh, they don't have it right here. Oh yeah, it's it's next. Okay, um, I want to I want to give that stop. But this is showing uh, a late night NASA image of South America um, with persistent fires burning in the region. These red areas are large persistent fires. These are lights from cities. The red areas are fires. Um, and this fire varies year to year in the Amazon. But it's driven by human activity and climate change. Um, and these is from 2019, which is associated with extensive land clearing as well. So they'll cut down forest and then burn the land and then grow. Um, what's the, is it some palm oil maybe? But I think soy and a few other crops are pretty common. But all those red areas are fires. The white are cities. That's pretty amazing. From 1860 to 1991, human population quadrupled in size, but our energy use, our energy consumption, increased 93 times. So our population went up four times, and our use of energy went up 93 times. The, um, well, 91 is a fair while ago. I was going to make a, an iPhone analogy, but uh, yeah, 91 would have been like, Mac 2C, I think. Obviously pre-Windows 95, so that would have been DOS days. For thousands of years, our population grew slowly, reaching a billion for the first time in 1825. And now we're 7.7. 7. Uh, now we're adding a billion people every 13 years. Um, this is a shape of a curve we'll be looking at a lot, particularly the, the latter part of this. And so... You can see a slow population increase, bubonic plague, which had a measurable impact on our overall population, industrial revolution, and then a rapid increase in population. Uh, the growth rate recently has slowed to 1.1 per year, which sounds low, but when you've got 7.7 .7 billion people, 1.1 is a lot. and that number compounds and so we'll look at exponential growth rates and so even a, a 1% or 1.1% growth is a lot over a long period of time which is why it's better to invest money earlier in your life rather than later. Compounding interest uh, and earnings is a good thing. If this growth rate is maintained there will be 14 billion people by year 2080. And the question is, how many people can we support? We've been increasing in population due to technology. Are there limitations to that? Ecologists use population growth models to understand how populations change over time 
and what factors promote or limit population growth. Um, an example of this are efforts to protect endangered loggerhead turtles focused on protecting hatchlings. But models show that even with hatchling survival was 100%, populations would still decline. So, and that's kind of an example. I'll show the baby turtles here. That's kind of an example of, like, we're trying to fix what we can see. And what we can see are baby turtles coming out of the sand. We can't fix all of the other things that happen to, um, that loggerhead turtles might face in their marine environment. Predators, entanglement with, with commercial fishing gear, collisions with boats, pollution, etc. That's hard to see, and so we don't put a lot of effort into that. An image like this can generate a fair amount of donor money, uh, generate a fair amount of public interest because they're cute baby turtles coming out of sand. And so we're focused on saving the turtles and we focus on that one life stage where they come on land and we can easily see them and count them. Um, but we can use population growth models and age structures to understand that even if every single one of these little baby turtles uh, survives to adulthood, once they enter the marine realm, or rather if they survive the hatching stage and, and swim out of the ocean, uh, once they get out there, life is hard. And it's those marine impacts that are frequently very hard to measure, very hard to see, that ultimately wind up, um, is what's ultimately, you know, d could be the demise of this population. So we can think about growth in a bunch of numbers and letters. So populations can change in size as the result uh, of four processes. So we've got nt, meaning the number in the population at time t. So we can think of this as time now, the number of individuals we have this year. nt plus one is the number of years we, a uh, number of individuals we have next year. If time is this year, nt plus one is next year. If this is last year, and we're trying to, to use this information to see if, if our prediction for this year is correct, this would be last year, nt plus 1 would be this year. So the number in your population at, at we'll, we'll stick with current because it's a little bit easier to think about. So our current population size, nt, uh, if we want to estimate what next year is going to look like, will be plus b, birth, kind of an easy one, b, birth minus D, death, okay? So like that in and of itself makes sense, right? The number we have next year is the number we have this year plus the new babies minus death. We can also add uh, immigration and immigration. So if we've got, this is a population, not um, the, you know, this is, um, yeah, this is a, a discrete population. And so if we have uh, a number of squirrels in our park and we want to figure out how many squirrels we're going to be in our park next year, that's a combination of how many are born, how many die, how many come in from a neighboring park, and how many leave to go to a, somewhere else. For simplicity, growth models typically don't include um, immigration and immigration. It depends on, on the situation. We're going to kind of ignore those factors now and think about it more as like a larger overall population. Now, the two main ways of thinking of increasing population growth are um, exponential and, and geometric growth. Population increases by constant proportion. 10% every year. Now there's kind of a, a couple nuances in the equations between geometric and exponential growth. In general, we use exponential growth uh, for most things, but geometric growth is for organisms that reproduce in synchronous or discrete time periods. The best example I can think of of this are birds, right? Birds just don't randomly, well, that's not true, chickens do it. <laughs> Um, birds that migrate uh, and have young only once a year uh, would be an example of a geometric growth. Organisms that reproduce 
uh, in synchrony at discrete time periods. So uh, what's a good example? Um, cormorants will like nest and have their young all at one given time. Most birds do it. Chickens are kind of a an out there one. Most birds will, you know, have a time of year, make a nest, lay eggs, raise those young. Exponential growth are organisms that reproduce continuously over time. Um, humans are often used as an example of that. Um, it's a fair number of organisms. Uh, uh, bison is another example I've seen which kind of works um, where there's that you could have a different number via reproduction in basically like every month of the year. You can think of it that way. The nuance between those two, um, like I said, most people use exponential growth now. And the, really the definition of geometric growth is organisms reproducing in synchrony at discrete time periods. They have different equations. Um, and we'll talk about both of them, and then we'll build mostly on the exponential growth model. So geometric growth is population changes in size by constant proportion from one discrete time to the next. Um, where this might become useful is if... I'm trying to think of it... There's like plants that do it, like we learned about the sensory plant that only reproduces every so often. So maybe organisms that don't, as a population, don't re reproduce every year, but maybe every five years, you might want that interval. The number of individuals um, added is larger uh, with time each period, and the population grows by ever-increasing amounts. So again, it's the, um, it's, if a population grows by 10% every year, it's not a linear increase, it's a J-shaped curve because that 10% gets larger and larger every year. And again, for geometric growth, I like to think about birds, um, ignore chickens, but like <laughs> most nesting birds. And I don't know what wild chickens do, they, they, might, they might do annual nests. Uh, so here's an example um, of uh, the dots being uh, geometric growth and so we've got you know age or the number at year zero one two three four five so the dots is the geometric part and the exponential is the smooth line so with the exponential you can calculate population at year four and a half or five and a half six and a half with geometric you're just calculating population at discrete time intervals so it's a discrete function as opposed to a continuous function is another way of thinking about it. Um, geo discrete, geo discrete, I'm trying to give a good, like handy new mnemonic for geometric and discrete. Geo and discrete. Um, I don't know. A geo metro is a discrete car. Think of some way to, to just fuse geometric and discrete in your mind. And exponential is continuous. So geo is dots. Um, maybe that's it. Dots are a geometric shape. Geometric are points, discrete points, and exponential is a smooth curve. Uh, for geometric growth, um, we use lambda, which is the funny looking upside down y, lambda as the geometric growth rate per capita, um, uh, or, or per capita uh, finite, finite rate of increase. Move me here. Uh, so we can use this equation, which is saying individuals we have this year, if t is this year, times lambda equals the number we're going to have next year. Uh, this predicts the size of the population after any number of discrete periods. And so t here has to be a, an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, not um, uh, you know, 1.5, etc. 
And so because in, this is a pretty simple, in t times lambda, we'll go through the terms, but it's lambda times in t, and, and you could think of this as, you know, if you, if you multiply 5 by 1, so if lambda is 1, you multiply 5 by it, next year we're going to have 5. If you multiply this year's population by 2, then lam if lambda is 2, so you multiply 2 by this year's population, next year will be double. If um, lambda is 0.5 and you multiply this year's population by 0.5, this year's population is 10, next year's population will be 5. So lambda is like a, it's like you can think of it as, uh, well, I can think of it as like 1 plus the percent rate, but um, it's the number you're multiplying this year's population by. And so you can, if you want to calculate um, the population size for a for a number of discrete time periods. So if n0 here, this would be this year's population, and, and I want to estimate population five years from now, then I'll do lambda to the fifth power equals n t, in this case five. So this would be the population five times from now. Um, so if I so in this case if lambda was 1.1, I'd do 1.1 raised to the fifth times our current population size. So that's a way of, it's basically the compound interest function, but it's a way of uh, predicting out populations without having to do it year after year after year. Now exponential growth is when individuals reproduce continuously. Uh, generations can overlap and the population changes in size by a constant proportion at each instant in time. So we could calculate a, a daily exponential growth for bacteria. We could um, generate a monthly uh, exponential growth for phytoplankton or zooplankton. Um, and we could calculate an annual growth rate for... Um, yeah, frogs kind of do it too. Uh, an annual growth increment for... Um, Squirrels kind of have a, they can have multiple breeding seasons a year, um, usually two, one, one about in January and another during the summer. So exponential growth is described as the change in the population divided by uh, the change in time. So the rate of change in the population size at each instant in time. So if we wanted a daily um, exponential growth rate, we would say how much did it change in a day? In a, how, uh, how many more are there uh, today compared to yesterday? And, and here, change in time would be one day. So that equals R, which is the exponential population growth rate per capita or intrinsic rate of growth. Let me let me come back and, and think about a better way to explain this really quickly. Okay, I think the the best way to think about R is the instant sorry intrinsic the instantaneous birth minus instantaneous death. Um, meaning this is the change in population for a given time. It's not the entire, um, it's not the end result. It's not nt and, and nt plus 1. So if this was, um, let's say this is bacteria. Um, and on for a unit of time for a day, you have um, a uh, death is gets hard. I was thinking trying to figure out how to do a doubling off the fly. But if you have, um, so you start off with, I'm trying to do the math quickly where it would play out the way I want it to. Um, 10 individuals, you start with 10 bacteria, uh, over a day you get 10 more, but 5 die, 
your intrinsic rate of an increase would be 5. So if you started off with 10 and you added 5 over a day, um, that would be your intrinsic rate of increase. So here we would say um, if we started off with 10, we added 5 in a day, uh, we'd wind up with a, a growth rate of, or an intrinsic growth rate of, of 0.5. So uh, let me make sure that's right off the top of my head here. Yeah, that would that, be right. Yeah, greater than zero. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay. So start off with 10. We have 10, bit, 10 new bacteria in a day, but five die. So we start off with 10, and then at the end of the day, we end up with 15. So that change in population over that change in time, the change in population is five. The change in time is a day. So if we had our n, our population is 10 times our intrinsic growth rate. Here would be 0 0.5. So 10 times 0 0.5 equals 5, which is our change in population over change in time. A bit convoluted, but that's kind of the best way I think of it as it's the addition or subtraction for each time interval, not the change in total population. I'll go back to geometric and, and kind of contrast that. Where geometric is the, the number for a given time period times the geometric growth rate, which for an increasing population is always greater than one. So in the bacteria example, it would be uh, 1.5. So if we started off with uh, a population of 10 and we times it by 1.5, we'd end up with a, a total population the next, in this case, day of 15. But here we have a population of 10 multiplied by 1.5, get an nt plus 1 of 15. Now, exponential growth is just a different way of thinking of it, where it's it's the number in the population, 10, times the uh, intrinsic rate of increase, which in this case would be 0.5. So we start with 10, it would be 0.5. We, our answer here would be 5. That's not the total population. That's the addition to the population. That's the intrinsic rate of increase. Uh, so we have to take that term and then add it to our prior population to get our total population size which we do in the next equation, which is why um, it, it can get a little wonky. So this predicts the size um, of an exponentially growing population at a given time t. If the population is growing geometrically or exponentially, a plot of the natural logarithm of the population size versus time will result in a straight line. That's just saying if you plot something exponentially on a log, it's flat. It looks linear. So here we have um, the number at time zero, uh, meaning these should be, it's kind of annoying, those should be down below like the other NTs are. Number at time zero times e to the rate, which for the bacteria was 0.5, times t, which is our, our time. Um, and you can use that to estimate population at time t. Look at that in practice. So here's an exponential growth rate. Um, I believe these are the same data that was presented here. So here we've got, we're starting with a population of 10. Um, lambda is 2, so we go 10, 20. Um, lambda is 2. Yeah, because it's not adding the addition yet. So lambda is 2. So um, what did I say? 10, 10 20, uh, 40, 80. 160, uh, 320, on up. So, uh, so here you can see the sharp curve. Here we should have the same thing 10, that's 20, 30, 40, 80, uh, what did I say, 160, 320, on up, 640, etc. So it's the same data, it's just plotted on a um, log. So this is 10. 100,000, etc. So when you have an exponential function and you plot it on a log linear plot, 
it winds up being straight. And so when lambda is 1 or r, the intrinsic rate of increase is 0, the population stays the same. When lambda is less than 1 or r is less than 0, the population size will decrease. And when lambda is uh, greater than 1 or r is greater than 0, the population grows exponentially or geometrically. Let me drop in Let's go back to our equations really quickly so we can see them side by side. So let's grab this guy and this thing, put it over here. And then let's get our, let's just, this function is the easiest to think about. So we go over here. Okay, and then this one is, oops, this one is geometric, and this one is exponential. This will make more sense if we look at the terms at the same time, I think. So let's put a lambda of 1 in here. So if we have nt of 10 times 1 equals 10, okay? If we have an n of, uh, what did I say, 10? Uh, intrinsic growth rate r of 0, 10 times 0 equals zero, meaning their change in number over change in time is zero. So we have not added anything to the population. When lambda is greater than one or r is greater than zero, the population size will decrease. I'm sorry, when lambda is less than one, alligator is the big one or r. Okay, so we have a population of nt of 10, and lambda is 0.5, so 10 times 0.5 equals 5. So next year we would have 5 with a lambda of 0.5. If our um, r is less than 0. Let's do um, less than 0, negative 0.5. So if we have an r, an intrinsic growth rate of negative 0.5, we can have n times negative 0.5. n is 10 times negative 0.5 we be minus 5. So our change in number over change in time will be negative 5. So if we started with a population of 10, took away 5, we'd have 5. When lambda is greater than 1 and r is greater than 0, population grows uh, geometrically <laughs> or exponentially. My copy and paste got crazy there. Uh, so greater than 1. Okay, let's do 1.5. So population at t is 10. Lambda is 1.5. 10 times 1.5 equals 15. So at our next time interval, we'd have 15. Uh, here we can do 0.5, so n of 10, r of 0.5, 10 times 0.5 equals 5. So we added 5 to the population over that change in time. Add it to our additional to our prior population of um, 10, and now we have 15. So that's kind of the best way to think about what these terms do um, and how they're a bit different. So lambda, the best way to think about it is lambda. Uh, rather geometric is 1 at, at constant um, and r is 0 at constant constant population size. This graph is showing the same thing here so here's a lambda of less than 1 and an r of less than 0. We have our population size and time. It's decreasing through time. When lambda is 0 and r, sorry, lambda is 1 and r is 0 no change in population through time. When lambda is greater than 1 and r is greater than 1, we have an increase in population through time. So the same thing we kind of walk through there. I'm trying to see if I want to stop here or keep going. 
Let's see. I might stop here and get this one coding. And then we'll go to doubling time. Okay, so we'll stop here.